So welcome everyone. Again, my name is Dwayne Fatel, and uh, today we're going to be talking about generating leads and sales from the internet, and uh, a couple of housekeeping items. A copy of this presentation will be emailed to you upon request, so you don't have to worry about taking all the notes, because I have, I think, 91 slides that I'm going to go through in the next hour and a half or so. It's a lot of information, and uh, uh, I know that it can be a little bit overwhelming, so that's why I will send it out to you. So a uh, door prize will be given out. But, uh, so if you would like to get into the drawing, if you want to write your name on a piece of paper, if you have a business card, if you want to pass them that way and we'll collect them in, in the, about the middle of the presentation, we'll do a drawing. So you guys excited about that? Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, this is an interactive presentation, so please ask questions. If it's a really detailed topic and we need to get into some more uh, nitty gritty, we may defer till the end, but uh, again, please ask questions. Welcome, have a seat. Um, so thank you to the SBDC and the SEC Metro Chamber. And I want to thank you, everyone here, for giving up your time today to come down here and learn about a topic that can help you uh, market your business, grow your business, and uh, help you out. So a little bit of background about me. I was born and raised in Dearborn, Michigan. Um, happy fa uh, father of a three and a half year old. I love staying active. My favorite sports are skiing, mountain biking, and got cut off soccer here. Uh, so, a question for you. What is brown and sticky? A stick. A stick, yay, someone knows that joke. It's my wife's favorite joke, so I had to start off with that. But yeah, <laughs> my wife loves that joke. And so, what's orange and sounds like a parrot? A carrot, right, you've heard that one before too. <laughs> okay, that's the follow-up, did I'm, all right. Got my silly jokes out of the way. We can go on with the presentation. Okay, so uh, background about myself is, um, uh, my mission first is I created, uh, my, my mission is to create a professional internet presence in order, to rate, in order to generate leads and sales for my clients. And I, since 2009, I've worked with hundreds of clients, uh, 90 some different niches. So if you say, hey, I'm in this niche, Dog food, yeah, we worked in that niche, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, lead generation is the one that really, to me, makes the most sense. You know, you give me a dollar, I want to give you three or five or ten in return, right? It's all about ROI. I want to help your email box get full with people inquiring about your product or your phone ringing or text messages coming to you. And that's the, the motivation for me with my business. I do website creation, updating, and optimization. I do SEO. I do local SEO, paid advertising, um, Google and Facebook, video production and marketing, email marketing, logo creation and branding. So those are all the different things that I offer as a company. One of my strengths is learning and it's a, it's a definite uh, benefit, but boy, it gets just in this area of marketing, there's just so much to learn, it's exhausting, you know, because it's always evolving, right? And so, uh, but, I've covered just about anything and everything online marketing, uh, and I'm gonna try to bring that to you today, uh, try to make it relevant. So, question for every business owner is, do you have a consistent flow of new prospects to your business? Really, that's the question. And can you increase lead flow quickly and easily? And then are you able to close these leads and generate profit, you know, with a profitable ROI, return on investment? And so, if you can't do this, then do you really have a business, right? And so today, m my intent is to help you understand opportunities available for your company to quickly, effectively, and profitably generate new clients from the internet, okay? So gone are the days where you had to rely on one of these. Who's got one of these in their, their, their driveway? I said, oh my God, you're kidding me. They're still printing these things, you know? This is where they go. Well, they don't have a recycling bin here. I'll wait till I get a recycling bin. But just a little bit of background on myself. In 92, 93, I worked for Yelp Page Directory. That's when it was like, yeah, the phone books are here, right? You remember Steve Martin and the jerk? He's all excited about it. <laughs> because people's businesses relied on that type of advertising. But obviously today we're going like this and that's how people are making decisions, right? Is using their phones mostly. So. So the outline of presentation, here it is. And I'm gonna go fast. I get, I get very enthusiastic and excited about it and I talk kind of loud. I don't think you'll have a problem hearing me. It's just more like, hey, you might need to tone it down a little bit. My wife's always like, shh, you know, <laughs> especially when our daughter's sleeping. Um, 
So I'm going to cover a lot of topics today, and hopefully at least one or two will be really relevant to your business. And so I'm going to jump right in here. So if you're looking for long term and you want to build a brand as well as get leads from every possible way, the foundation of a business is a good quality website, right? Um, and you put branding and marketing in there. This will help you get clients now and later. Right? You need to have a good foundation out there. And so that's where I'm going to jump in right here. Um, later, I'm going to talk about if you only want customers now, then basically you just need a lead funnel. <clears throat> you need advertising to a landing page and then some way to get the leads. Right? And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So right now, um, we're going to start with uh, Google best practices. Right? It's Google and Facebook right now. Those are the main ways to get business. Right? So we're going to talk about Google. So, who has a website for their business? Awesome, majority of the people here. So, where I start when I work with a business owner is, let's do an audit on your website, right? And there's a score or a scoring system, or there's many different ways you can audit a website. And, and so that's number one, and number two is how many keywords is your website ranking for organically? So if I do a search that's related to your industry, is your website gonna be on, found on the front page? Right? So that's what, you're, that's what I'm talking about for your website ranking organically. So to get an audit score, you might do a Google search for something like website grader, right? And again, you can find a couple of them. Uh, this is one of my favorites, um, HubSpot. You just pop in your URL of your website and your email address, and bing, it gives you a score, right? I need to lead by example, so I did a, uh, my own, and out of 100, I'm at 89, right? And you can see that performance, mobile, SEO, and security are the four main areas of this particular grader. They want the potential website visitor to have a good experience, right? And there's four different key areas that they're looking at with this particular grader. And so, again, those are the things that this one grades on. There are others that will give you a little bit different uh, results but i like this one because it really helps you to uh do a good audit on your website so the second aspect is how many keywords is your website ranking for organically and there are several uh d different uh website or or um, software companies that offer website graders to see what are your website you know what's it ranking for and so these are, have a one-time or monthly fee and um, it's, does, so if I, do you know what your keywords are, your most important keywords are? Pet food, dog food, home del delivery, premium pet food. Okay, there you go. Anyone else, do you know, who has a website? Do you know what your most important keywords are? Anyone else have a website? You guys, a lot of you raised your hands. Who, who else knows their most important keywords for their business? Health and wellness. Health and wellness. Okay. Internships, interns, college success. Internships, okay, college success, that's great. Vacation. Okay. What's that? Vacation. Uh, yes, uh, that would be in addition to, what, what's your business? Uh, we're a language service provider. So. Language service provider, mm -hmm. okay. So whatever it is, language service provider, Sacramento, mm -hmm. right? You would add that on, or Citrus Heights, or Folsom, or wherever you want to be, right? Yeah. So this is a uh, screenshot of when I started working with a florist. He was, uh, you know, we did, hey, let's, let's generate a monthly ranking report. Uh, and this is what we did, the first one. And so you can see he's ranking in the first page for just a couple of these. And this is a before scene. And these are the number of monthly searches for that particular keyword. Has anyone ever seen something like this for their website or anything like that? This is really important to know, you know, you want to go after, you know, for Sacramento. That would be one of your higher ones because that's the most keywords per month. So the, the other uh, point I want to make on this is, would you rather rank for bankruptcy attorney Sacramento CA or bankruptcy lawyer Sacramento CA? It's pretty obvious, right? There's four times, is my math right? You know, seven, it, seven. seven times as many, thank you. <laughs> Uh, seven times as many searches for one keyword over the other. And so you really want to focus on 
the most important keywords for your business. And again, that's where I'm going back to. You need to know this uh, for your business. So the next thing I want to talk about is the website itself and the on-page content. So imagine opening a book and you look at the index of the book and every chapter title is the same. You'd be like, what? what what's that all about? You know? It's like, why would that, why would the author write every chapter title the same? A lot of websites have never taken the time and gone in and put in a title to their page or a description that is unique for that page. And Google, basically, they'll never rank that page. And so what Google sees on websites, they have to have, the, uh, you know, this is what Google sees. And every page has to have a unique title and description. So. Here is an example, page title at the top, and then the description below. And so the best practice is every page must be unique. Has anyone gone into their website and done that? I mean, it could be just slight variations, but you need to do that, right? You or your, your webmaster. And I think I just lost the ability to click here. Sorry, I'll get it back in just a second. Okay. I have people that are not muted. <laughs> so they're talking on their end? you guys might be able to hear them, so I just had a mute. You're good. Okay, there we go. Awesome. So you're wondering, okay, how do I know if I have a good web uh, site title and description? There are some tools out there. Again, they're limited by the length because if it's too long, it gets truncated and you, you won't see it. You might or might not see it. Uh, and so here is what a uh, good uh, tool is to uh, use for websites, titles, and descriptions. Yes? Um, why would you use Yoast uh, for WordPress? Uh, why is that unique? Uh, Yoast automatically does this. You don't have oh. to worry about it. Yoast says, hey, it's not, you know, do you want to add more keywords because it's kind of short? Or, hey, it's too long. You might want to shorten this here. I see. Right. And so if you have a WordPress website, thank you for that. Yoast is one of my favorite plugins because it just dials this in for you. Um, images. Uh, who's ever searched for an image on Google? It's about everyone, right? You ever thought, how is they able to find that image? How is that in the index with Google? Has everyone, anyone thought of that before? Right? So to get your images found, every time you upload an image to the web, it must be optimized to rank. Okay? And so here is what typically happens is that you take an image, your phone, your camera, whatever, and it gets assigned some generic code, right? Image 101.jpg. So you need to go in and you need to assign, again, variations of your most important keywords. And again, going back to the geographic location, you can see my client here, we're going after the city of Orangevale where he's located, right? And so the Yoast plugin is another benefit is that every image will have its own page, which is pretty cool. Um, so Google indexes images, so it's vital to name every image on your site with your keywords. And not leave, the, not leave that original code. Yeah, you just go in, while it's on your computer, you just write, you know, rename. Boom, you put in your keyword and just go down the list. But it's got to be relevant to the image as well. You can't name it something totally different, right? You can't have a picture of an AC and name it uh, uh, furnace or, or you know you can do something like that but you know what I'm saying it's, you can't be very really off with that um, so here is a website where I'm hovering over this you can't see that but that is the name of the image Corsages and Boutonnieres Orangevale California and this is a snapshot of Google you know you type in Corsage Orangevale and her Corsages and Boutonnieres are on the front page of Google Right? And what do you do? You click on that image and it goes right back to the page on your website where that image is, right? Yes? Is she creating one image for, she wants to, be to come up for corsages in Orange Hill, corsages in Folsom, corsages in Citrus Heights, or is she tagging them to all those towns and when somebody does a search for Citrus Heights, it also comes? You would want to, no, you want to go one geographic location at a time. Does that make sense? So you have another image for Folsom, have another image for Granite Bay, have another image, you know. Yeah, she's located in Orangevale, and so she got some of the, 
surrounding communities just by default, yeah. right? So, so before you load your images on your website, what do you need to do? Rename, Rename them. Okay, awesome. And if you have a WordPress website, you also want to put an alt image tag, alternative image text tag. And that's more than we need to go into today, but the most important thing is to put in a, another image name. Okay, so mobile friendly. <laughs> this is a little bit dated because almost everything now is on their phone, right? Some industries, it's like 80, 90%. If you look for a restaurant on a weekend at night, what are you doing? You're like this. It's rare that you're on your PC. So if you're not mobile ready or responsive, which means it can be adjusted, you know, a tablet to phone to, you know, regular screen size, Google's not going to rank you. It's not going to index you. It's not going to show you for people that are on their phone. Okay? So you need to be mobile friendly. It's either pass or fail. So on your website, blogging. Okay, Google likes to see updated information on your website frequently. So anyone here a blogger? A little bit. A little bit? Okay. Okay, <laughs> not many writers here. Okay, who's ever said, oh, I need to blog, but where do I get content? Everyone thought about that before? Private label rights? Okay, just do a Google search for that. PLR content. It's it's content where you, uh, writers have gone out there and they've written you know, dozens of articles on a topic and it's generic content, but you can take that, edit, 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 make your own, and you've already got a foundation for a good article, right? You just gotta make sure you edit. You can't just copy paste because it's gonna be like duplicate content and it'll never get indexed and, and no, no one will ever see it. Um, but that's a side point that's kind of a bonus because a lot of people just like, oh, what am I going to write about, right? Um, so that's something you can do. Four reasons why you want to blog. Drive traffic to your website, increase your SEO and your search engine ranking uh, results. SERPs, yeah. Um, search engine results pages, right? Position yourself as a brand or industry leader and develop better customer relationships. I mean, blogs are one of the best things to drive traffic. If you continually put out new content with good quality blogs, you're going to get people to your website. So autoresponder, anyone using an autoresponder? Is it, does anyone know what it is? <laughs> you guys are probably all on hundreds of lists, or not hundreds, at least lists, where every so often you're getting an email from the same company, right? You signed up for something, you got a download, you got whatever. Those are autoresponders where you set it up so you get an email on holidays or on they're having a special or whatever. Those are autoresponders. And if you're driving people to your website, the majority of them are going to click away. They're never going to do anything. But if you have an offer of some kind, an ethical bribe, per se, per, some people say, you can get people onto your list, right? And then you can continually market to them. And so that's something that, you know, like MailChimp is free. If you want to start adding functionality, more options to what they offer, then you have to pay. AWeber is like $19 a month. Others are similar. Um, but if you start building a list, these are pe people that have taken the time and effort to get on your list so you can continue to market to them. They have given you permission to say, hey, I've got this going on, or I've got this special, or hey, check this out here. And they're OK with that. Now. Um, I mean, just a, one last point on that is that, um, oh, it's all right. I want to make sure I have plenty of time. Uh, so recap, SEO, search engine optimization, all right? On page content, again, uh, you want to have good text. I didn't really go into that a whole lot, but you want to have at least about 350 or so words per page, right? And if you have a Yoast plugin, it's going to tell you this, right? Um, good titles and descriptions. And tags, again, the tags are like the images themselves. Do they have the good, uh, correct keywords for the images? Um, tags, I have another presentation I do where I really get into the weeds, but you want to have like the H1, the H2, you know, you have bold and italicized and text. These are all different ways you can highlight text on your page. And uh, Google really likes that, right? And so. If you're doing it yourself, it's a lot to learn, but if you're, you have a good person writing content for your website, they'll incorporate this. They'll do that. So you want to make sure all the tags are there. Um, photos, we talked about responsive. 
uh, mobile friendly. So, so all these items must be properly optimized so Google can find your website and index the pages on your website, right? So that's what you need to do so that Google says, yep, here's a quality website. We want all the Google users to have a good experience, so we're going to show this website, right? So that's kind of the foundation for your business. So blogging and autoresponder, we talked about those. So here's a success story, a local business. They are an awesome company if you need car batteries or boat batteries or whatever. Battery Bill. I, went to, I, I found them on Yelp and I went there and I'm like, oh my God, awesome experience. I looked at their website and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like 1970s. And it was like all of the content of the whole website is basically on the new site was up here. <laughs> Everything they had on their website, I was able to put in a header. And then we built out, I think, like 22 pages or whatever. And you can see by just doing that, it was huge. It's like 10, more than 10 times the amount of traffic because now they're ranking for all these different keywords that they weren't before. And so that's what can happen when you really dig in and you have a really well written and designed website that's user friendly. So, yes. Um, so uh, before, I just missed it, um, you said before you post um, a picture to an image to Google um, or on your website, yeah. you do what? You make sure uh, you rename the file using your most important keywords. Okay. And then you said with a word WordPress, you do an all image. Right. Um, uh, one step further is going to be what's called an alternative text, where it's basically the same thing. Whatever you would name that file, you just put it in what's called an alt text. Okay. So that it's just another way that Google says, oh, yeah, this is what this image is all about, right? Okay. It describes the photo. Okay. Another step. And then can I ask you, how do you find out what the number of visitors are? Uh, there are a number of tools. Like I mentioned a couple for the ranking, you know, what website is, uh, what keywords your site is ranking for. It's the same thing, oh, you know. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, Google uh, Analytics is free where you can go in and you just put a little snippet of code. Google tracks all the visitors and they'll, they'll show you how many visitors have come to your website. Yeah, so Google Analytics free. I mean, Big Brother, but you know you're, that's where you're getting the majority of your traffic. So, yeah, very important. So, off-page SEO. Uh, is anyone familiar with link building? Ever heard the phrase before? Okay. So, in any competitive niche, dog food would be a competitive niche. Any site that is ranking well has an ongoing link building strategy. So what that means is you have a beautiful website, but if no one else is linking to you, then you're nearly non-existent in digital terms, right? And so link building means you have your website and you have different pages on your website and you've got different links that are pointing to your website from all over the web, right? Google sees that and they're like, oh, well, why is, why is this site over here ranking to this site over here, linking to this? And so over time, you build hundreds and even thousands of links from all these good quality websites. Google says, oh, this is an important website. Let's, see, let's rank it higher, right? That's the simple answer for it. And so here's kind of a, a hierarchy. You have some different ways to go about building links. Here's kind of a, 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 you know, a, a funnel, upside down funnel to build links to your site. Um, you don't want to have thousands and thousands of links. You want them to go from one site to the next, then to yours. So like it's a tiered system. Um, I use a lot of press releases. I like those because they take well, they do well. Uh, but here's some examples of where links can be created. You know, forums, comment marketing, word of mouth blogging, social networks, and so forth. So you don't want to spam. You want to have good quality, high, uh, high quality inbound links. So does that make sense, people? It's kind of boring and tedious to do it yourself, uh, but and that's why you hire other people um, to do it. So who has a business uh, that, let me go ahead, okay. Did I skip a file? Okay. I had a thought of another slide in there. Um, so now I'm talking about local SEO. So who has a business where they have a physical location or they serve other people in their business or home? Okay, what kind of business do you have? It's a catering business. Catering, yeah. awesome. 
Okay, so for you and anyone else that might be in that category here, I'm going to talk about local SEO. Um, so if you want to show up in the maps, it's called Google My Business. It's gone through several iterations. The most frequent is Google Places. Um, there are a number of different things you want to do. Uh, in 2014, there's a big update. They want to make sure that your name, address, and phone number is the same across the web on all these different websites, right? On Yelp and on Super Pages, Angie's List, you know, the Maps, Yahoo, Bang, and so forth. And so, I have a tool that I use. Is I put your information into a dashboard. You could include all your content, your your logo, images, everything you want out there, and we load it up, and it goes out to 67 different online review sites and directories. And if you're curious to see how your business is ranking right now, you can take your phone and scan that, and it'll take you to a page, you put in your name, email, phone number, and so forth, bang, it'll give you a ranking. It's pretty cool. It's very fast and efficient how it does that. Um, there's another link here, Power Listings, that's on my website. Um, but it's very powerful because if you get into the map section in Google, your phone's gonna start ringing, right? And I've had many business owners where we help them get going and they're a local business like a catering or an HVAC or um, photographer or you know, realtor or whatever, all of a sudden they're getting inbound phone calls. And it's because Google wants their users to have a good experience and they wanna you know, showcase local businesses. We don't have to rely on a phone book to look at, right? it's, it's right there. Um, does that make sense? People, anyone, okay. So this is a, a screenshot of a Google My Business dashboard, okay? And you can go in and you can create them. Google My Business, again, is free, right? You can go in and you create these. Now, by default, uh, Google just lists one category that your business, your primary category. And you can go in there and change that category. And you can add up to 10 other categories, which you can see for my heating contractor guy that does appliance repair, we used all 10. As soon as we got this set up, it's like his phone starts ringing because again, it's free traffic. You're ranking in the, the, the top three spots. You can put in there descriptions, photos, coupons, special offers, announcements, reviews. There's 21 steps about, it varies. Google's always updating stuff uh, for uh, filling it out. So again, for catering, you probably, anything else besides catering or just catering? Parties? Marketing a restaurant. So there, there you go. I got a question for you on yeah. that. For you, it's like you have that little QR thing. Yeah. So you just can copy and paste that onto your website or onto your pub publicity and then people will be able to go to the phone and go like this and get find you? Uh, this is, I, I didn't explain it. This is a QR code that I created and that will take you to uh, a scan uh, for business owners just to put in their business name, their phone number, their address, and it's, it's the power listing scan will go out to the web and say, out of all these 67 directories, how are you doing? Are there errors? Is it the name, address, phone number, uh, website address, all consistent on all these 67 directories? Does it even exist, right? and it gives you a report to all of these directories. And it's very important for local businesses because, again, they need to have the consistency all around the web and they wanna be listed in Yelp and Bing and Yahoo and you know, insider pages and all those, right? And so if you have a local business and you want to know, hey, how am I doing in all these directories and review sites, just basically hold your camera up with your, uh, with your, your phone with your camera, it'll take you to a web page and it'll give you a review. Or you can I enter your. I had a student kind of guy come and develop one of those things for me, and he said that when you put your phone up, it would go to my website. If it was yeah, you, QR codes are cool. Uh, yeah, you can you can go qrstuff.com, yeah. and you can create your own. It's okay. like, I think that's what it is. yeah, yeah. If you can have it uh, populate your own uh, contact information, it can have you play a video. I mean, there's dozens of different applications for it. <clears throat> I think it was developed in Japan for uh, tracking uh, the car parts that are, as they're being in production, you know, that type of thing, years and years ago. But yeah, you can do just about anything with them. You know, make dozens of them if you want. And on the next slide, we have reviews. Can, if you've got reviews from certain websites, can you copy and paste the reviews onto your other websites, or how do you deal with reviews? Like. If you have like 50 reviews and they're written and people sent them and right. say on Yelp, 
how do you get them onto the other ones that you're involved with? <clears throat> so they're on they're on like Yelp. Same people. They're on Yelp, but they're not on Google. Wire or on, not on, on the yeah, not or whatever. How do, you, do you have to keep asking the same people for the review yeah. every time? Yeah, pretty much. Hey, I've, uh, you know, it depends on your industry. You know, like yeah. if you're doing wedding, wedding catering, yeah. then you want to say, hey, you just had a fabulous experience with our dinner. Here's Would you? the links you need to send your review to. Yeah, How I know. I get tired of them. There's it, no bank of it or anything. There's no way to bank it, huh? There are some tools that I've come across, but it's still kind of sketchy to try to do one, to yeah. do all of them. You have to go in individually. I mean, Google and Yelp are the biggest ones for your industry. The not, right, are going to be huge. And, and so you have to ask for reviews. And that's one of my slides coming up here. Okay. So, OK, question. How many business categories does Google allow in the Google My Business account? Ten. 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 OK, awesome. And a bonus question. How many categories does Yelp allow? One. We, we didn't get to that one yet. Three. We'll get it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So here's a success story. This is a pumpkin patch. My wife and I with our daughter went there a couple years ago. They weren't on Google. They had some website that was like, what is this? And then the, the next year, I, I, so I said to the business owner, I said to the guy who's running the pumpkin patch, he's like, your website's not working. And I, never, I didn't find you in the map. I don't remember how we even found this place. I think there were signs on the side of the road or whatever. So he said, well, yeah, I need some help with my website. My, uh, my web designer is MIA. You know, can you help me out? I said, sure. So we, we built a, a simple mobile-friendly website. One page, basically, is all you need because people are looking, oh, when are you open and what do you guys offer there? And then we went and we built out a Google My Business listing. Well, you can see 151,000 people last fall saw his map listing in the, the map section, you know, hay rides or pumpkin patch, you know, pumpkin patch is this category. <laughs> I talked to him on October 11th. He says, we sold out of pumpkins. <laughs> it's kind of a good problem to have. He's like, I'm calling all the farmers I know that have pumpkins and we're buying them all, you know, <laughs> yes. I have a question about um, internet based. So I work out of my home. Yeah. I'm not local specific. Right. Um, how important is this? Like, I know it's local SEO. What is your business? So I have two businesses that overlap. I run a virtual assistant company. Awesome. And I also am a certified Infusionsoft um, partner. So not location specific at all. <clears throat> right. So all over. for you, you can put in all your information, and then there's a, a little bu or a box that says, don't show my address. Okay. So then it's a circle okay. instead of a little pin drop. So you still get the bang for the buck of having it up on Google My Business, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah, I've done that for a lot of people. Um, so <laughs> it was a good problem for Hav. He loved it. He was swamped. I mean, the, the whole family, well, the end of October, they're like, oh, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, but they're happy. Uh, so reviews, getting back to that the earlier question about reviews, y you have to ask. I mean, that's what the bottom line is. You're going to rank better. You're gonna, you, more people are going to see those reviews and go, wow. And the other cool thing is that, some of your reviews are going to talk about wedding catering. Others are going to talk about maybe a different facet of what you offer. So you've got these reviews with the paragraph of what they're talking about. Inside of those reviews are keywords that Google picks up, right, that talk about your business. So those reviews are going to pop up and show, and you're going to rank better that way as well. So Yelp, uh, love it or hate it. I mean, people want to sue them. They've never been, they've never lost in a lawsuit. I mean, extortion tactics about, hey, advertise with us and you'll do better in the rankings. Well, they can, never, no one's ever proven that. Love it or hate it, Yelp can bring you a lot of business. And so I have a friend who's the ESAC handyman. Uh, he had, uh, he was like, oh, I need some more business. What do you think? I'm like, you need to get going up on Yelp. And so he had no images. He had four reviews, minimal content. He updated his profile, had a cool logo got nine reviews. He, he asked uh, some of his clients, hey, can you give me a review? Next thing you know, he can't keep up with the business. And so this is his only image now. Because <laughs> he's getting pictures. He's the East Sac handyman. He doesn't want calls from South Sac or West Sac or, you know what I'm saying? He's slammed. He, he's like turning a business, a business over. So I made this suggestion. He's like, thank you. And now he gets people calling from East Sacramento. He doesn't know advertising. You know, he's been doing it long enough too, but he's got his own local businesses. So my point in all that is Yelp works. Uh, and so 
if you have a local business, again, uh, the caterer here, you definitely know that, right? Yelp works. Yes or no. Okay. Uh, local service providers, absolutely Angie's List. I have uh, clients where we got them up and going, got their profile all filled in, and he got some reviews, and once you get reviews, then it snowballs, right? They do no more advertising, they're done, they get calls all day. The older population, they use Angie's List, right? They feel because you're paying $10 a year that it's going to be something that's <laughs> safe to use, right? Angie's List. Um, so if you're a contractor, maybe you give away some memberships. Spend $10 to give to your clients and ask them for a review in return. So uh, Craigslist, talk about Craigslist. So it's the seventh most popular website in the United States. Uh, so who knew this, that your Craigslist ad can rank on the top of Google? Did you guys know that? No. If it's written well and you have good content, again, Google's looking for a good user experience, your ad in Craigslist can rank on Google. So here's an example, right? Craigslist second position, marine repair, okay? Um, so for most of the ads are free, but now for a number of the, uh, the, the uh, categories, like small business ads was free, but now it's five bucks. I mean, good for Craigslist for charging money. I mean, you used to go to the small business ads and the landscaper and the painter and the electrician had 20, 30, 40 ads, right? Now they're gone, which is great because if you spend five bucks, you're gonna really stand out. And so, believe it or not, I've gotten a lot of good, high quality, high paying clients from my Craigslist ads, you know? I do a lot of different internet marketing things and I have ads in SAC in the Bay Area and South. Uh, down in uh, LA, I get calls and it works. So if you have any business where you think, hmm, is my client going to be on Craigslist? You never know, right? Spend five bucks because it could be a huge ROI for you and your business. And if you write a really well written ad, people might be finding you on the front page of Google as well. So don't overlook that. It's free or next to free to do some marketing on Craigslist. Yes. I ask you about the Yelp. Um, do you have to pay to advertise? I mean, we got into this advertising thing for like three thousand five hundred dollars. With Yelp? Like, yeah, and they, they they originally said it would be like ninety dollars a month, but depending on my traffic and how many clicks I got, and then they start charging me three hundred twenty five each month. Each month, and I mean, it was a mess, and we didn't see that we got any business from Yelp. But do you have to to use? To be successful on Yelp, do you really need to be a paid advertiser or just do the three categories and just be a generic kind of? Yeah, as long as you have good reviews. It's all on keywords. Yeah. yeah. Reviews. Well, it's just getting enough reviews. There's a point of momentum. Maybe it's maybe it's six or seven for you, or twenty, or thirty, or fifty. You know, uh, I needed a locksmith, and I I looked on Yelp. There's one guy who had like 400 reviews. They're all like five star. I'm like. Who else am I going to call? This guy, a better, cheaper locksmith, you know? And he had some other marketing in place that was just awesome. And I was like, I love dealing with him. I gave him a five star review. And um, anyway. You can still use their analytics and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a business owner, they, they have a dashboard. They'll, yeah. th you can look at all the traffic. You have to be a paid no. That sounds okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I've been on with them and off with them. Am I advertising for myself? Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, if you're busy enough, why not? Why? You know, the people are going to find you anyway. Mm -hmm. But they have some nice perks to it. Yeah. And it is a pay per click, and it varies by in industry. Yeah, we're going to get into paid advertising here okay. very shortly. Jessica, <laughs> I'm not clicking. I don't know what she did. Um, So okay. while you're there, if you have like media that's, that's uh, promoting you through press releases, say, yeah. and you're becoming part of their, their client and they're pushing you out, so that increases your, it's good to do that. To have, to have press releases? Media type. Oh, yeah. Your support. Authoritative uh, yeah. links, absolutely. Or bloggers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you can get other third parties in. Their business that they job. That's kind of how it works. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Like guest blogging is kind of what you touched on briefly, yeah. is if other people are, are uh, well-regarded bloggers with good content. Uh, it, traffic to you. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a link somewhere in that article. Hey, if you want to learn more, go to the best caterer in the Sacramento region. Boom. And it, you know, link to you. Um, so social media. We're going to jump into social media now. Um, LinkedIn, high income professionals, you know, Instagram, Pinterest. If you have anything visual, you want to be on there, right? And I'm, I'm going to jump in more, but that's just kind of the oversight right now. Um, but now I'm going to talk about video. Um, so who is using video at all, any form or fashion, to help promote what they're doing online? One, two, three, four, five. OK, so I know this guy over in the corner. <laughs> yeah, right on. So five out of 20 or so. OK, uh, well, congratulations to you. Um, we're going to talk into it a little bit here. So why video? OK. Uh, Anyone considering your company or your service is probably going to Google you, right? Check you out. Wouldn't you love to have several videos that they can watch about what you do, what you offer, your products and services? I mean, it's a great way to build trust, transparency, and rapport, which are the key ingredients for them to want to do business with you, right? There's no better tool than video to help do that. So reason to use video. 20% will read text, 80% will watch a video, right? A visitor on your website, <clears throat> if you have a video on there, uh, it'll make them six times more likely to convert them into a paying customer, which is awesome, right? So what types of videos? And this is kind of the, you know what I've, over the last several years, I've done thousands of videos, I, I lost count, a couple thousand videos. Um, been I, just a little background on myself. Back in the 80s, when videos were like big machines, the big VHS and the Beta, and they had Umatic, which was like production, you know, corporate, uh, uh, big huge tapes. Um, started in high school, and I did that for a couple of years in high school. Loved it. And back nine, ten years ago. When YouTube came out, I'm like, what's this YouTube thing? I started getting back into it. And that's when I started making videos. And so um, I built, again, I've done thousands of videos. And uh, these are kind of the highlight videos that I would, wanna, I, I would suggest for any and every business owner. First one is the introduction video. It's uh, building that know, like, trust. Who are we? What do we service and product uh, you know, do we offer um, for professionals or anyone that's doing a more sophisticated product or service that has a lot of questions, then I would say, hey, you need to do a series of frequently asked questions. You're getting the same questions again and again, right? Well, what about this? And what about this? And can you explain this? Well, then why not put it on video, right? Um, my favorite video to do is a testimonial, right? I have one of my, my clients. I said, hey, why don't I do some testimonial videos for you? I will go to your clients. I will record them. It's not always comfortable if you're the business owner asking for a testimonial. But if you have a third party there, I will make sure that they're going to, can you say that again? Can you reword that so that, you know, can you say that with a little bit more enthusiasm? Can you smile when you say that instead of being grumpy face, you know? So I'm there in front of the people and I'm getting a good quality testimonial. Sometimes people are just naturals, it pops right off. Other times it's the third and the fifth and the eighth take, you know, before you really get something good. But again, testimonials are huge. Who has testimonial? Who has, who has clients that really love them, that love their product or service? Okay. And who has a video testimonial from that client, any of their clients? We have one. Okay. If you go to my website, I've got right in the front, I've got 10 of my clients singing my praises. And people come to my website, they'll watch that video and say, hey, I watched your video, I want to meet with you, I'm interested in working with you. It's like the sales resistance just, it goes way down, right? Um, doing presentations, if you're ever in front of a room speaking to people, you want to catch it on video, right? <laughs> um, it helps showcase your knowledge and expertise, right? Who has a technical product? You sell phones. Do you, have, do you have anything that you, how do you explain your product? Do you have anything like a video that's explaining your product or is it just text and images or? Uh, well, corporate art, we have a corporate website. I, I haven't gone to enough to, <laughs> I sh probably should, huh? Yeah, so nothing that sticks out right now that you know of. Yeah. Okay, however, you could take it upon yourself to create some videos, right? 
there's some frequent asked questions or some highlights that you would want to talk about that people could watch and really explain in depth with what your product, your service that you're offering, your product that you're offering. Um, done a lot of demonstration, you know, technical products. Um, and a lot of those are, you know, it takes a lot of time. And I don't know if, you know, sometimes you can take it on yourself. Other times you need a third party to really get in and help you develop those videos. Um, sales, thank you. Follow-up videos, those are always uh, great to put out there. Um, because who does that, right? A birthday, congratulations. Has anyone ever got one of those? Hey, happy birthday, even if it's a Facebook Live or anything like that. Isn't that fun? Someone's taking the time to do that. But really, what does it take today? You don't need to set up with a tripod and fancy equipment. Everyone's got a video camera right there in their pocket, right? What we have here today, even 10 years ago, was, um, you know, it's like it was thought about and they wanted it, but it's amazing the technology we have today. So you guys get it. What types of videos? Okay. And Jessica keeps coming in here. All right, here we go. So on camera video, so if you want to get in front of the video uh, camera, there's a couple different ones. Again, talking head, these are talking heads, presentation, interview, demonstration, or get in front of a green screen. This is an example of a green screen here, me in front of the green screen, and you can drop in your own background, okay? Oops, okay. Uh, if you're getting in front of the camera, here are some tips. You know, um, I've had one client who was an attorney that she knew her script forward to backward and set it perfectly the first take. I'm like, where did you come from? You know, <laughs> it was amazing. <clears throat> she had written her script, practiced it, rehearsed it, and when she got up with the camera, she just set it perfectly. I'm like, wow, good for you. You want to rehearse and be able to deliver videos with confidence and competence, right? So you come across and people can feel that. Uh, you want to focus on being trustworthy and credible and have authority. And the content that you're providing is, and how can I bring more value to my viewer? You know, how can I serve them, right? If they're going to be watching your video, that's the questions you want to ask. Again, frequently asked questions are good topics. And then, should ask questions, right? That's the deeper level. People understand, yes, you're going to do this, you know, maybe it's, you know, what does it cost per person at the table setting? And what about this? And what about this? But you're thinking ahead, well, what they really want to know is this, this, and this, right? You know, am I going to be there on time? Am I, am I, is my staff going to have clean shirts? Is, are they going to be polite or whatever? You know, there's a, a deeper level of questions that people will ask once they get to know you and they're doing research, right? They're doing their cursory research and then they're coming to the tail end of their buying decision and then there are the deeper questions. And so those are good ones to really think about too. Um, you want to be upbeat, enthusiastic, interesting, and engaging. On video, you in your mind, you think you're going like this. Yeah, right, you're being super excited. But on video, it comes across like, it just, it, it, it seems flat, right? Because people are so outrageous and crazy on video that a lot of times it's just like, that's expected. So you got to get out of yourself when you're on, uh, on video in front of your camera. Um, keep it short. For most topics, a minute is best. If you have a longer topics, maybe you just chop it up and you do a few of them, right? You got to finish with a strong CTA, call to action. What do you want them to do when they finish watching your video? Do you want them to go to a website? Do you want them to call you and book an appointment or whatever? End with that, right, as to uh, your video. So, so if you don't want to be in front of a camera, there's lots of options. You don't have to be in front of a camera because people are like, oh, I don't want to get in front of a camera. Well, you know, you're camera shy, right? Hire someone, uh, do a slideshow or graphics video, do screen capture, um, product demonstration, whiteboard explainer. These are kind of fun, right? They keep your interest, like the little doodle videos, the uh, whiteboard explainer videos. Um, so door prize, do we have business cards? We have stacks of business cards. Again, I have lots of different products and services that I offer, so whoever wins today, get your choice of 250 bucks. Anyone not pass it on? Okay. Okay, right here. We got more, more, okay, awesome. Is that everyone? You wanna write your name on a uh, piece of paper or just maybe lend them a card and yeah. just write on the back of a card just so it doesn't look so different? Yep. 
That's okay. Oh, just my name. Sure, your name. We can talk after. Okay, awesome. So, did we just scratch that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. How would you borrow one of his cards right on the back of it, just so you have a fair chance? Yeah. Yeah. Because the one piece of paper, I don't want to discriminate. Awesome. Here, just scratch out the front there too. Okay. Jessica's not here, so we have a hat. Can I borrow your hat? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it myself, but you know. All right. You took a shower today. Wash your hair, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. You got a black. There you go. Oh, Laura, there you go. There you go. Our winner. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. So I do have an autoresponder email file list. Would everyone be okay if I sent you a, a series of information? I have your cards here. Okay. If you want to opt out, there's just a click and it opts you out. Okay. But if you're okay with that, I will send that to you. And you and I can chat after today. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Okay. So congratulations on that. So. You've created a video, and now what do you do with the video? So obviously you put it up on YouTube. Yes, I'm sorry, I thought it was a question. Um, put it on your blog. Facebook, we're going to talk about more. Pinterest, Google+, LinkedIn, email. So these are places you can use your video. So this is a YouTube video. You just embed it right in your, in your website, right? That's where you want to do it. Um, who has, okay, there's very few of you that have video, but have, has anyone ever seen video on LinkedIn? Right? Again, you want to have your fans singing your praises, or you talking about your products and services right on your LinkedIn profile, right? Um, Ernie, you know Ernie, this is his email signature right there. You. Mm -hmm. I tried. <laughs> we have a video with him giving a testimonial for Ernie's, uh, one of our clients' services, and he has it right on the email. So hey, check out my, e uh, my testimony video. And so different places you can use your video. Um, YouTube is the second highest used search engine right after Google. Um, Facebook is on, right on its tail. I don't know if it's crossed over yet or not. Um, so a web... Uh, a website with video embedded will rank better on Google, just because there's the Google uh, the juice of the the link, right? Uh, and videos will rank on Google, not just on YouTube. You've seen, you've gone and done a search on Google, and boom, what's there? A video, among other things, right? Um, here's an old example. Not working with them right now, but bail bonds didn't need the service myself, but uh, one of my clients, uh, bail bonds. Frank Kelber uh, up in Auburn. You can see the video is right here, ranking. So pay-per-click, we're going to talk about that. But these are $50, maybe $47, $45, you know, per click, right? And to have front page organic ranking, that's awesome. I mean, they're doing very well uh, with all of their listings here. But that's an example of a very good quality uh, front page ranking. So. Most business owners, I think this is why we're all here today, is just leads, right? And they want to control their lead flow, and this can be done effectively with paid advertising. And this is how you turn on stuff and get leads today, right? And that's what I'm going to cover now. <clears throat> so did you know that without a landing page, 90% of the traffic you're getting to your website uh, will click away? Unless they're researching about you. If someone's coming to your website for something, they're going to click away, 90%. Um, but if you are looking, but if a visitor is looking for help, they need to be given the next step in their search. A landing page should provide their solution and then get their information. We've all gone to a website and it's a landing page, right? You know, problem, solution, click here, fill out your form or whatever. That's a landing page. It's not multiple pages. It's just a single, you know, squeeze page, landing page, whatever you want to call it. You know, hey, you're looking for a great wedding caterer. You know, this is what we offer, you know, book an appointment here. Something like that, right? 
set up a tasty, whatever it might be. Um, so we're going to get into paid advertising, and uh, there are numerous options that go far beyond the big search engines. However, uh, few are as quick and powerful as getting on the top of the search for targeted keywords. And the cost per click, that's how Google makes 90% of their money, pay per click, is based on supply and demand and a few other factors, including quality score. And why I love uh, you know, pay per click or cost per click is because it's an excellent source to generate instant website traffic, right? And also, it's a great information for inf getting targeted keywords. Like people will be typing in stuff like, I never thought of that. They're looking for that. You know, you get all this information that you can then edit your content, you know, or create new content for your website. And you can get that all through paid traffic. So I'm going to cover a couple of these. I got Google, Yahoo, Bing. It's also AOL and then Google AdWords Express. So paid, uh, um, paid advertising, again, retargeting or remarketing with Google is highly effective and very inexpensive. Um, you may pay several dollars for an initial click, but with only a few cents, you can show the same ad to the same viewer. Uh, who's ever been doing research on a product, or, and all of a sudden you see that product everywhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're retargeting, right? So I was searching for some uh, sprinkler heads, like they're you know, 59 or 69 cents on a, a website. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing that same sprinkler head everywhere. I'm like, what? They're retargeting a little 60 cent part? But they know that if I go there to buy one, I'm probably going to spend several dollars or you know, 50 or $100 on stuff, right? And then they got my information. So anyway. Um, they just didn't know the price of what you were searching for. Like they just knew you were there, but not possibly, yeah. yeah. But we've all had that experience, right? Your your the product or service, the pair of shoes that you're looking at, all of a sudden is everywhere, right? What about it's conversations. I've been I've heard of people. Google knows everything. They're they're looking at your emails, right? And conversations like spoken. Spoken, yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, with Alexa. And oh, Alexa, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yes, Big Brother is out there. Why is it Big Brother and not Big Sister? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who has a physical location for their business? I know you have a caterer. You have a physical location. OK. Um, we talked about getting your account listed inside of the Google My Business account, right? And there's 10 categories you can put on there. But you can also advertise inside of the map section. And this is, again, for all the service providers or the people with physical location. So <clears throat> you can instantly get in the map for targeted keywords. I mean, there's only three map listings, right? There used to be five and seven and 10 for different categories, but now it's just the top three. And it takes a lot of organic work to get those into the three pack, right? But you can jump around that by doing paid ads, okay, on the Google My Business platform. So these are great for, again, the local service provider. And it's something that you can set up. It's lower maintenance, and, but somewhat limited, but it's great if you know anyone that has a local business that would want to get ranked in the maps. Um, if you're a service provider, HVAC, locksmith, and so forth, they're now coming up with um, Google Guaranteed. Okay, uh, you need to get background checked. You have to prove you're licensed and insured, and then you can be a Google Guaranteed provider. Okay, it's a pay per call, and you only pay for calls that are 30 seconds or more, and it's awesome for the business owners that are using it. So if you know anyone that's a service provider, again, the Google Guaranteed is awesome. So pay per click. Um, a caution, don't just point traffic to a home page without working with, uh, with Google or someone experienced in AdWords. You will waste money. It's extremely sophisticated and it requires tremendous time and energy to set up. It really does. Uh, I've been doing it for eight years and um, it's a lot of work to get a AdWords campaign up and operating and working efficiently. It's a, who's, as a business owner, who's ever got a coupon from Google mailed to them? Has anyone ever used that coupon, set up AdWords? 
done it themselves? No takers on that one? Okay. I've met many business owners that have, and it's like a year later, like, yeah, we're spending a couple hundred dollars a month on Google, and I don't think we're getting anything from that. I'm like, I, well, I, I, can, I can understand because it's really tough. Um, Google, uh, the other option for Google is Bing, Yahoo, and AOL. It's a great secondary market, and it's uh, great to consider for less tech savvy, more affluent, um, higher income you know, population. It's about half or less than half of the cost of Google, okay? And I have a mortgage uh, broker client, and we were doing Google AdWords. I said, hey, let's look at you know, the, the Yahoo Bing network. Um, and we were paying about five bucks a click on Google. It's about $2.20 on Yahoo Bing. And it's a better, higher income uh, target to go after. Because less tech, sa tech savvy people are still using Bing as their search engine. They don't know how to install Google Chrome or use a different browser. So they're using a the default that's there. And so that's just an, a really good option. So, so pay per click. Uh, success story, I work with a funeral. Uh, I work with a florist here. And we decided through a lot of uh, you know, Q&A and, and kind of this, uh, what really is something that we can go after locally that um, would work. And so anyway, we went after funeral flowers, monthly ad spend about uh, 500 bucks. We dialed in, it took some time to really get it dialed in, but he saw a bump in his business about five grand. And that's the type of thing that you can do with paid advertising. Um, an AdWords failure story, I was referred to a bike store and I say, you need some help with Google or just ranking? He goes, yeah. And I go, you know, we, we opened up his account in, in Google and I saw all the keywords that people were typing in to get to his store. And I said, do you sell electric bikes? He goes, no. And the guy in the shop that's fixing the bike behind him and his employee says, no, but we get calls all the time. I'm like, oh my God, he's spending about three or $400 a month on electric bike clicks. I'm like, and then I go, do you sell recumbent bikes? You know, the kind that you sit back and you pedal like this? And he goes, no. He goes, yeah, we get calls like that too. So he's spending $1,500 a month on AdWords to sell bikes, but about half his budget is going to a waste. There's, there's inside of Google, there's keywords that you want to get found for, but there are also negative keywords where you say, hey, Google, I don't want to get found for anything, someone that types in electric bikes or recumbent or any variation like that. So again, that's where you want to, like, oh, you want to work with someone that knows what they're doing so you're not wasting money, okay? So it can work very well, uh, but you have to be careful. So transition time, Facebook. Has anyone been on Facebook today? <laughs> no? Yeah. Who doesn't go there pretty much every day? Okay. Uh, I'm not going to talk about organic postings because there's a lot of great content out there on how to create really good posts and get some activity on your organic posts. What I'm going to focus on is the paid advertising that, p that you can do on Facebook because you can ramp it up, scale it very quickly and effectively and profitably. Um, and if you do have some organic stuff that's doing very well, you can use that same post and then advertise that. And much more beyond than just a boost, right? Um, so the Facebook Pixel. Has everyone, anyone ever heard about the Facebook Pixel? No. Okay. Out of all the incredible tools Facebook has created for marketers, perhaps the most useful is the Facebook Pixel. It's uh, the ability to target users based on specific action on your site like visiting certain pages or not quite completing their purchase, you can help deliver highly targeted messages to warm audiences that are already familiar with your brand. Okay, it's awesome. Uh, Facebook Pixel, it's a little snippet of code. Um, it works by placing little triggers, uh, cookies to track users as they interact with your website. And it helps you optimize conversion uh, uh, on Facebook ads. You collect data, right? Um, people have already taken some kind of action on your website. So there's a whole thing about installing it. Basically, you have to create an advertising account on Facebook. You have to create a pixel, and then you grab a little snippet of code, and you go back to your website, and you put it on your website. And it's not complicated to do it. It just takes a couple steps to do it. So again, for those of you on Facebook, uh, Facebook with your business, your business page, right? Those of you who have a website, 
you want to do this, right? Um, so the benefits of using a Facebook pixel. Um, track conversions, you can then remarket. <clears throat> you can create lookalike audience and you can run effective ads. And I, I don't want to go over your heads, but these are all very good ways to market your product or service on Facebook. So research has shown that Facebook has over 2,000 points of data on each and every user that's on there. And it's omniscience. Facebook knows what you're wondering. <laughs> that, ever, that post that you were thinking about posting, then you erased it, that's all there. They've, they've captured that. That like, that share, that hmm, you hover a little bit longer on that one to kind of check it out before you move on. They know all that. Why is this important? Because if you're thinking about marketing your business online and you're thinking about Facebook, your exact customer is hanging out on Facebook. And it's important to identify your target audience and then continue to target and retarget. So Facebook targeting. And I've got a couple slides to talk about all the different ways that you can target behaviors. But you got all these different things. You got automotive charitable, do you know, charitable donations, expats, job role, uh, the mobile device user travel, you know, on and on and on. Uh, one point out. Uh, one thing I'll point out is that uh, you saw Zuckerberg in front of the congressional hearing or whatever. Uh, the only thing they backed off on basically that is sizable and or meaningful with regards to advertising is job titles or job roles. They've kind of backed off on that. So you can kind of work around that now, but you can't say, I want to target this business owner or this type of business. You can say they like this type of business and they have a small business and they have an interest in this type of thing. But the titles are gone. But anyway, but all these things are still available here. Interests, business and industry, entertainment, family relations, wellness, food and drink, hobbies, activities, shopping and fashion, sports, and so forth. Uh, and another one, demographics. Where do you live? What kind of languages do you speak? Education, financial, home. You know, this is huge. All this information, it's all there for you to be able to say, hey, I want to advertise to exactly this consumer that's hanging out on Facebook. So I got a, some dog food company owners here. If I owned a pet food company and I wanted to target dogs, I wouldn't go after the little teacup dogs, right? That's right. I'd go after the big breeds, right? Like the St. Bernard. So Here's a little sample of what I put together. If I was going to create an ad in a campaign for someone like a dog food company owner, I would say, hmm, I want to go after dog owners. And for one campaign, I'm going to go after St. Bernard dogs. And then my geographic reach is, you know, you can put wherever. You can do the whole United States. You can do a state. You can do a city. You can do a radius like you see here. You can do a set of zip codes. So you can get dialed in. You could have one zip code, and that's it, right? If you wanted to market that way. Yes? Would you consider, I mean, I've seen it done both ways. Would you consider doing multiple ads like this, just targeting to St. Bernard's, or multiple interests in one ad? No, I would be, uh, there's a phrase used in internet marketing, the riches are in the niches, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so I would do one ad, get it all dialed in, yeah. and then I'd go duplicate, and I would change the image. And then I go duplicate and then change the text a little bit. And I would go duplicate and maybe change one other thing, right? So I've got maybe four ads. I'm spending a dollar in a day for each of those ads. So I'm spending four dollars to reach the St. Bernard owners in my targeted area, yeah. right? And then I'll go, okay, let's go after Akitas or let's go after uh, Great Danes or whatever. And I'd do the same thing, right? And so if I were marketing that way, that's how I would do it. And I would use an offer where there's a quiz or there's an offer of some kind, you know, and I'll get to get that in a little bit. But you can see just this geographic region, dog owner St. Bernard's, there's a potential reach of 620,000 people, right? I mean, that's a huge area, the Bay, obviously, in Sacramento region. Um, but that's how I would start a campaign is to do something like that. So we've, we've We've done some stuff like this. Okay. And uh, so the criticism I have, or the, that I'm interested to take on, is 
you know, you've got to create the ads and you've and you've got to figure out the messaging and, and you know yeah. you're going to do it. You're going to give your best shot and it's not going to be the best shot. You know, you're going to have to. You're going to have. There's going to be a, a multiple iterations before you. Absolutely, it's called marketing, right? You don't know what works the first time around. So yeah. Does it make sense to come up with a campaign and focus in on one or two zip codes where it's going to be inexpensive, but, but it's big enough? So you know, dogs. Sixty percent of the population has a pet, so it's a, it's not like you know. Right. It, it's not like you you know you need a lot of zip codes to find people. But it, one of the things that the people we were working with, were, I got in big arguments with, is that we were being too broad and that we should be focusing on small zip codes until we figured out what works yeah. and then expand. Yeah, 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 absolutely. A zip code or a city? Yeah, either one. Or, yeah. yeah, whatever. Enough so that there's enough of a population so they're going to see it and you don't have to show them, you know, you, once it gets to two or three times that they've seen the ad, they're going to interact with it or not, right? And so you have to have enough samples, a big enough sample size, so they can see the ad a couple times, and they're gonna. Then you, the cool thing is that you're gonna show the ad, and there's gonna be people that like it or share it or click on it. They go to the page, but they don't, you know, they don't take action. People share ads. Yeah, you bet. You know, I've it's never like even considered sharing an ad. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey Joe, check this out, and they'll share it. You know, if it's an offer for a big. With free breed. Food, yeah, I'm sure you could get that shared, but you know. Yeah, well, yeah, or 10% off, or free delivery the first time. I don't know what you guys would offer for that, but um, and I have a little picture of Instagram here because Facebook owns Instagram, right? Lots of assets. They bought them. It's just crazy how much they all. So inside of the targeting down here, you don't see in the screen is, do you want to be on just the the uh, the messages, or do you want to be on the sidebar? Do you want to be in the videos? Do you want to be on Instagram, right? And so you have all these different options where you can advertise. I think it's a 12 or 15 different ways that you can have this ad show up, right? And it's obviously it, it eats up your budget to do that, but um, but that's a, uh, these are all possibilities. Um, so important point, just kind of like I made with Google pay per click, is to exclude. If you know that you do not want people there, you need to put that in there to exclude people. Uh, maybe they're diehard Neutrogena fan. I don't know. Uh, not, uh, what's the competing? Like what? We well, not what I mean. Competing brand or competing Co competing brand or or whatever. You know, you can exclude people that like that brand or something like that. You know, I don't know. Just throwing out an example. I don't know your ins and outs of your industry, but that's an important thing to do because if you show it to them know how know where they're ever going to click on and buy your products or service right if you know that uh if it doesn't pertain to you exclude them so does that make sense i mean you guys we would okay. want to exclude existing customers right yeah uh so there's a spot up above here in the dashboard of facebook where you can let's say you own a business you own a catering company and you want to advertise to just your list of people right you can put up your list and all the emails of all your clients and say, Facebook, we want to advertise to just these people, right? And it'll find the email addresses and it'll match them to Facebook accounts and then you can advertise to them. But what's really cool is that if you have a list of your current clients, you can load that list up there and say, hey, Facebook, give me a lookalike audience. These are my best clients. I want people that match the same demographics that are on Facebook as this. That's powerful because the learning curve that you have to go through with the iterations, like, well, I, uh, let's try this out, let's try this out. Well, if you already know who they are, load that list up there and then go after it, right? Because that cuts a lot of the learning curve down and it's just very powerful to do that. That list isn't your friends then. No, no, no. These are your clients, right? So if you have, it's got, you have to start with at least, say, 125 or 150 people because not all of those email addresses are going to be matched to a Facebook account. Probably 20% or so are gone because they don't match up to a Facebook account. But if you, look, if you have a list of your best clients, you can create a lookalike audience and market to them. Can you do a, a client list of your friends? I mean, let's say you've mixed your clients with your friends. Can you can. Can you load that up? And if, if, they're, kind of people or if they're similar, sure. Yeah. I don't know if I would do that, but yeah, you could. Yeah. So it can cut the learning curve way down and the expedite the, the success ratio very quickly if you have a audience that you've already established that you can load up into Facebook. So, so here's an example of a Facebook ad. Um, huh, it's interesting. Okay. 
So I do marketing for loan originators, people that want, you know, and targeting people that want to own a home. And they see this ad in their feed. They, well, I want to get advantage, I want to take advantage of today's low rates. And they click on the link or learn more. And then they go to a page that looks something like this. And here's a quiz, right? People love quizzes, right? They don't like to get qualified, but they'll do a quiz, right? Quizzes are one of the best things you can do. So there's all the different things that they fill out. Then a form gets submitted via email and text to my client, the loan originator, and then he follows up with them, right? Uh, very powerful, um, and it works very well. So the Facebook pixel, the cool thing is that as you're marketing, it gets smarter and smarter. It gets better and better results. If you tell it exactly what you want, it will get better and better with delivering to you, the advertiser, what you want. So I'm with my client and we told Facebook to target good leads instead of just leads. So we had eight leads and he goes, hey, you know what? I want higher credit scores. So we did a custom, pick, custom conversion event. So now we're going after good leads instead. So they have the higher credit scores. And you can do stuff like that within your advertising campaigns as well doing the custom conversions, right? Um, again, Facebook gets smarter and smarter. So I mentioned my, my client, he's a mortgage guy. Um, this is, after we've added the Facebook pixel, uh, you can then go into your dashboard and look at the activity. So we've got just the main website here, but we also have pages that are geared towards CalPERS or CalSTRS employees because he has a special loan program geared towards them. And so this is the HTTP and that's the, the secure, the S version. So between the two pages, maybe 500 or so visitors in just the month of May. And the cool thing is that it might have cost him several dollars to get a website visitor, but it costs about three cents to show an ad, to have an impression, an ad show up in their feed. You know, he's got a lot of different things that we're doing for him to get traffic to his website, but for us to retarget that same website visitor, this is why I was really emphasizing the pixel, is because you can show that ad to people for three cents, roughly, a piece. Does that make sense? Is that, do you think it's powerful? Uh, I think it is. I'm excited about that. <laughs> so. So, as I mentioned, I do internet marketing and I have many different proven funnels. So you say, hey, I do this and I want leads. Um, a year or so ago, I invested in a high-end mastermind training and these founders had been spending millions on paid ads and myself and them, we, we have many different marketing funnels that are proven. So if you said, hey, I'm a photographer, and I want more, I want to shoot more weddings. Well, I've got a funnel. We just need to turn it on and you're going to start getting leads. Or, hey, <clears throat> uh, I do, I have a hair salon. I want to fill up the chairs, the calendar. I do garage door repair, whatever. <clears throat> One of the areas that I'm focused on a lot is mortgage buyers and refinance funnels and distressed sellers or investor funnels. Um, but these are, if, if you know of anyone that is any, in any of those, I'd love to have a conversation with them because I can, help rock their world. So again, paid ads to landing page to leads. And the cool thing is um, we have an automated follow-up software. And here is a little screen capture of the dashboard of that. Who's ever got a lead and like followed up with them once and then forgot about them? I think we all have, right? It's like who, who follows up with them the sixth or the eighth time? Less than 10% of the people. It, it, you know, maybe 50% will follow up once, and then 40%, 30%, 20%, and then anyone, you know, anyone that follows up on their own more than five times is less than 10%. So <clears throat> it's the same thing across any industry, unless you're a superstar salesman that just has a ton of energy and tenacity, you're not going to do it. So what we've done is, the biggest challenge again is we've taken it and we put it, a piece of software in place. So day one, a lead comes in, you know, for dog food. You get a customer, they're inquiring about it. An email goes out, a text message goes out, and a voicemail goes out. It's all pre-recorded, ready to go. They don't respond. Day two, <clears throat> they get an email and they get another text. 
Day three, another email and text, or another text, another text. If they respond to any of these, boop, they're taken out of the system, and then you're having a conversation with them in person, right? But if they don't respond, they're at least going to get seven days of follow-ups. What is that? Seven, eight different follow-ups. And then they can just send them into your drip system so that they can be followed up on every month or whatever, right? They're at least, they've expressed an, expressed an interest. So does anyone see that as very valuable to have something like that in place? Because who has time to send out text messages all day or send a voicemail, you know? It's like, I don't, but this is super powerful. What are you using to do it? Uh, there are a couple out there. There's a system that was rolled out. It's still actually in beta. It's called Howdy, H-O-W-D-E. Um, it's part of this mastermind group. Two of the guys that are founders of it, uh, they got together with a third guy that does real estate, uh, and they created this. Because there are competing products out there that had all these limitations. They said, well, we don't want these limitations. We want to do it all across the board. And so anyway, they've got it. And we can talk more about it. <clears throat> so it's been, it's been really revolutionizing how people do business. Um, so you guys probably saw this headline, right? Or <clears throat> this is one of the bullet points for my, my, <clears throat> my talk today. Getting help for 2 to $5 an hour. Would anybody be interested in that? Yeah. yeah. Anyone has grunt work that they just like don't want to do, right? So you saw my numbers here. This is the average family income in the Philippines. Okay, going back a couple years. The Philippines, again, the US dollar has been declining, so the dollar has worked a lot more in the last couple years. $2.53 an hour is the average wage. I mean, there's different wages for different professions, but overall, this is kind of an average. So if you are interested, and you have a virtual assistant company, so you already know this, right? You're probably using this, and probably I'm going to maybe step on your toes. or What, Ted? Different level, I think, of uh, Okay. Things. All right, so you can hire highly quality, educated, devoted virtual assistants overseas for very low hourly rates. So again, think digital. What do you got going on that can be done anywhere with your work, right? Everyone has stuff that can be done anywhere. So I love a website called Fiverr. Who's heard of Fiverr before? Okay. All right. If you have something that is like a one-time, hey, I need this infographic created or I need this nice PDF created, this form, I need a voiceover, I need a little technical help with this. I've, this is old, but I've completed 420, I think I have 500 now. I've had completed gigs on Fiverr. They start at five bucks, that's where Fiverr came in, right? Five, five bucks Fiverr. But they go up to hundreds of dollars because people add a, offer a higher value service than just the five dollars would entail. I've had a lot of logos created where the initial concept is five dollars. There's a service fee that goes on there. But you send out a logo design to four or five different designers, people that are in Philippines or Moldova or India or Pakistan or whatever, and you get different concepts that come back. And you say, hey, I like this one or this one. Let's see if we can blend these two and send them back. And then it maybe cost you 75 bucks or 100 bucks but you're in control of the whole process and it just works great. So you find your, just look for the ones that have the good rankings, uh, you know, with the ratings and stuff like that. Fiverr's an awesome resource, yes? Does that belong to you or does it belong to them? No, it's yours. I mean, uh, f going back to the logo. Like the rights to like yeah, yeah. you're uh, having them produce. Absolutely, it's, it's yours. Okay. And you know, this is just an entry, but let's just say you want a logo but you want to have the vector files. You want to be able to put on a billboard if you want, you know, the good quality. So you want to have the source files. The, the, uh, uh, and for that, there's an upcharge. So you might have got some concepts, you get it down and down, so then you pay another $20 on top of all of your creation, the iterations. So maybe you end up with $50 with the logo design and then another $20 to get the source files so that you can give it to another designer for them to do any final edits or changes later down the line. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah, you absolutely own the rights to it. Um, so if you're thinking about a potential virtual assistant, here are two websites that I've used and hired people on, and I don't know if you're, you're stateside, do you use it overseas at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
I've hired people on Upwork. I've hired people off of onlinejobs.ph. That's in the Philippines. And, and these are for projects that are ongoing, typically. You need some help with accounting. You need some help with whatever it is in your, you know, producing reports. Or uh, I have website guys. I've got some video editors I've worked overseas with. I've got some SEO people I've worked with overseas. But you know, virtual assistant uh, that is able to communicate well in English with good experience, starting sa starting salary is at least three to five bucks an hour. They go up to maybe 10, 12, 15, 20 overseas. But you're getting good quality, reliable, polite. I like dealing with the Philippines because they just are very respectful. They always call me sir, and that's kind of fun, you know. Um, but you get just, I, and you saw the wages for over in the Philippines. If you're paying someone $5 an hour and they're in the Philippines, you're supporting a family. Think about that, right? That's, that's kind of mind blowing to me. Um, so can anyone see how that might be beneficial, valuable to their business? Yeah, it's awesome. So <laughs> I love Jim Carrey. <laughs> So who is excited about uh, what you learned today and would like to share about how you're going to implement something into your business? There's got to be someone in the back, yes. Um, I've thought about adding video content to my LinkedIn. Like my history was kind of working in sales to the government. Okay. Public or private, public sector, but I've kind of moved into the private sector, so now I've got a whole different audience and I'm just kind of starting to build that network. So. I think video is something that will be really good once I can figure out what content I want to put in there. Awesome. It is a good way to reach out to people and get them interested and build that mm -hmm. trust. Because even when I see somebody's um, email signature with a picture of their face, I may never meet that person, but I kind of feel like I know them a little bit more. Yeah. Um, just by seeing that face every time I communicate with them. Awesome. That's a good idea. All right, great. Thanks for sharing. Video, yes. Um, I think the testimonial <coughs> piece was um, strong because my husband is a pretty well known chef and he does recipes and stuff on site. And like tonight, today he was at Univision this morning. Wow, okay. He was on the TV holding my, my camera really closely to the TV trying to do this, not knowing that I could pull it off YouTube or whatever I can do, right? Right. But the testimonial piece, <coughs> we've got over 600 corporate clients that we've, that we've garnered over many years and we've never really followed up in terms of thank you, review, reviews, and that sort of thing, right. nor testimonials. I mean, people can look at the list of clients, but the testimonial from AT&T or Delta Dental or something on a small business is it's huge. Awesome. So, that was um, really good to, to learn. And the importance, I think, of the, the blogging. Okay. It's covered by one of the top food bloggers in the country, which has driven us. We didn't know how that all worked. I right. Mean, she's obviously selling advertising and making millions of dollars, but it's driven a lot of business to our site, even probably more than the Yelp. That's great. I don't know the Yelp thing. I was kind of. So, you have 600 corporate clients, you said, mm -hmm. and have you ever reached? Do you have their emails? You know, that's the, 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 the person and virtual thing. That's what you need help Absolutely. With, is getting that database and doing that because we're just been a husband and wife team doing this you yep. know, and going out and looking for people that are we can talk to because we're not super like savvy on all this. Yep. That was a good reference too because yeah. it's just doing the admin and the data entry because I work full time for a major corporation and help my husband. So it's like a little overwhelming. Right, yeah. But I like the Philippines and the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a thought I would have for you is to get that email list. Then you and your husband could have someone turn on the camera and say, hey, thanks so much for being our clients. Right? And then send it out. And then grab your Yelp link, mm -hmm. put it in your email, grab your Google My Business link or the not link, whatever you want to emphasize, and, and then say, hey, thanks so much for being our clients. We really appreciate your business. Can you just do us? Uh, can you do us a quick favor? It'll take you 30 seconds. Just click on the link and just go to our whatever page and just give us a quick review. Yeah. And by you being in front of them with a video, see videos inside of an email will get a huge open rate versus just a plain text or image video, uh, email. And so if you put the videos inside the emails, and a lot of the like I know Hotmail, the video if it's embedded there, it'll show up in the like the preview 
Like, so you don't even have to open it. You'll see, hey, there's a video there. And, and the other thing, with, video, uh, with YouTube, you can upload a custom thumbnail. I didn't get into this before, but YouTube, if you go to video, it takes an uh, uh, image from the very middle of the video, or you have one from the beginning, towards the beginning, or towards the end. Well, you can upload your own image as a thumbnail, you know, so if you're like this in the middle of the video, you don't want that, or the other ones are kind of blank or really weird, upload your own image with you guys smiling or have a little text on the screen or something like that, right? So it makes it more engaging. So, awesome, it's great, yes? Is there a standard of how many seconds a video should be for people to watch? Yes, no. Oh, how long they watch, I'm sorry. How long they should be, period. Um, people's attention span are getting shorter and shorter. I mean, it depends. I would say 30 seconds or less for your, you know, to get people interested, huh? Basically to grab them. Grab them, right. And there's an app, Vine, you guys, I don't know if you heard of it. It's like 15 seconds, right? The younger crowd would know about this. And you can edit together 15 second little clips or whatever. And people are awesome. They're so creative about how they put these little crazy like huge stories inside of 15 seconds, you know, but short, right? If they keep them coming back for more, do another one and another one and another one, right? Just keep them short. That's where I would start. But if it's a long, complicated technical topic that you're on, they'll sit around for as long as you need to explain that, right? So, yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Uh I thought everything was really, really informative. Uh, for me, a couple of new things that uh, that I learned just today uh, was the link building strategy. Yeah. Uh, and then also what you talked about in regards to Facebook Pixel. Uh, I've done the boost, I've done the basic one, but yeah. I didn't realize it's a whole other, more in-depth uh, thing that can go. And then the power of retargeting, uh, that was very helpful. Yeah, so. yeah, so you've done boost. Yeah, and you're relying on Facebook just to know your audience, right? Instead of you going in and saying, well, I really want to target these people, right? And, uh, you know, Boost is great because Facebook knows inherently who you are, but if you really want to dial that in, you definitely want to do that. That's great, yeah. So, anyone else want to share? This? Okay, awesome. So, if you want to take on your own marketing, I hope you have some, uh, you learned some valuable strategies and tactics to apply them in your business. And again, thank you for coming out. Um, I do offer a complimentary business marketing coaching consultation to discuss your marketing needs. Um, how I work with business owners is uh, I can come along inside you as a coach or consultant, uh, just a project or an hourly basis, or you can be uh, like a lot of business owners will just hit the easy button. It's like, dude, I just, I need help. Just do it. You know, I get a lot of clients that are like, do it. Just let me know what I need to do, but just do it. Um, and again, it starts with a complimentary business coaching session. Um, if you pull out your phone and you scan that with your camera, it'll take you to that page and it'll boop, pull up a little place you can put in your name and email and a phone number. Um, so, so future topics, just if you're interested, I'm gonna be talking about um, messenger marketing, you know, inside of Facebook where you have the messenger, right? Super powerful because that's where kind of the AI is coming in, artificial intelligence, where you can load this whole campaign where if they say these words, then you respond with this. If they say this or this, then you respond with this. And it can go on and on and on, and it can lead up to an automated phone call to the business, and it's just super powerful. Um, a lot of fun. So again, comments, questions, or feedback, uh, I'll stick around for a while. Um, and if you wanna get on a uh, conference call, I, I welcome you to do that, so. <laughs>